Right, good morning to you all and God bless you. I will tell you this. Last Sunday at this, no, last Sunday at half past three, I was at a funeral under similar circumstances in Guides in Hoover. Today I am here. Wednesday I have to be in Guides. And they, they're all, all friends. People I have known for 30 and 40 years. It is a kind of sadness that I, I don't know how to share with you. This is not a job. It is, it is like a brother that died. This is not a job for us priests because we have known you all for so long. In fact, one of the poets said a long, long time ago, when somebody dies, a part of me died. And that is how we feel in times like these. So sisters and brothers, we are joining with my, my friend Nelson. God bless you. And he has come a long way in the last few weeks too. Fortunate to be here with us and with his children. So we are sharing in worship service at this place is, is uh, Budu's funeral home in Kunupia. I am saying this because this is a live stream program Budu's funeral home in Kunupia, Central Trinidad. So we have a few of us here, relatives. This is because of the protocol due to COVID that all over the world where hundreds of people would normally go to a funeral that we have a handful. Today is, I remember the time I did a funeral recently when it was five in 20, 2020 or 2021, five persons in the chapel. We have a little more now. So for those of you who are sharing this program live stream, I am seeing all of these things, where we are having it, what is happening, what is the situation here. We are having members of the family take part in the service, reading the lesson. I'm looking at a nice, beautiful program. Vas and Vivian Dilchan will be here with us. Kriti Gittens will be here with us, Maureen, uh, Ingrid, Larry, all of them, the family members are here. So this is the setting for this service. There are hymns that have been selected by the family. So those of you who are home, those of you who are in the office, in your office, family members and friends, we ask you to share in this morning of worship in, in solemn remembrance of the life and times of Neil. So God bless you all, and we're going to begin the service at this time. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you may be also. The truth is, says the Bible, that Christ has been raised from death as the guarantor and the assurance that those who sleep in death will also be raised to life. And the Bible says, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? And O grave, where is your victory? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says we are troubled, and that is so true, as this morning for the Dilchan family. We are troubled, but not crushed, meaning this is not the end of things. We are troubled but not crushed. Sometimes we are in doubt, but we are never in despair. There are many enemies, but we always have friends. And though badly hurt at times, like whenever there's a funeral, we are badly hurt. Though badly hurt at times, we are not destroyed. We know that God who raised the Lord Jesus Christ to life will also raise us up with Jesus to be in his presence for life eternal. All these readings come from the Bible. The last one comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We are singing the familiar hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Now, since it's the first one, we are going to stand. I wanted to ask Ingrid to come and sing because... No, not Ingrid, not Larry, not Maureen. So all of you will help with what a friend we have in Jesus. It's on the program. What a friend we have in Jesus. 
all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials? Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it. Amen. Let us all unite in prayer. We stand in the presence of God who is Father and Creator of all and pray His blessings and His guidance as we worship. Pray for the comfort of His Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, Creator of all humanity, the Lord of life and death, this morning we stand, O Lord, amidst the mysteries and the cold silence of the casket. In sorrow of heart, O Lord, and with frail and tested faith, we commit these solemn moments of worship for your inspiration and guidance. Come, Holy Father, to sustain us with your mercy and love in our helplessness and grief that makes sorrow so painful and unwelcome. O Holy Spirit of God, we pray that you will grant us new streams of your grace through the priceless revelation you have shared with us in the sacred scriptures. Almighty God, our Father, may our beloved hymns, even our weak and faltering prayers and every word of consolation, God, we pray that they will be instruments of blessing to all of us who are bound together in overwhelming sadness. Almighty God, who by the death of Jesus has made holy the graves of the saints and by his glorious resurrection has promised us life everlasting, today we thank you for the assurance that through Jesus, death sting is defeated. Eternal God, our Father, we remember with gratitude the life and times of Neil Dilchan and all that you enabled our beloved brother to do in this life. Now for him all sickness and sorrow are ended and as he walks through the portals of death we pray almighty God that he will be numbered in heaven's glorious family. Almighty God we pray that he will hear you say well done good and faithful servant Enter into the blessedness, the rest and peace of your Lord. Be with us, Father. Forgive us from our sins and shortcomings. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all and please be seated. We're going to be as close as possible in following the program that is a beautiful program with Niels. I'm saying this, if, if I say extra things, it's for those who are Following the program on stream, Neil Marlon Dilchan. Um, we have a very beautiful program and we are going to stay close to the program. We are having the first lesson from Wisdom, the Book of Wisdom, Chapter 3. Then we are singing the hymn, Blessed Assurance. And the second reading by Miss Gittins. All right, come, thanks. Good morning to everyone. The souls of the just are in the hands of God, and no torment shall touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they appear to be dead. Their going is held as a disaster. 
It seems that they lose everything by departing from us, but they are in peace. Though seemingly they have been punished, immortality was the soul of their hope. After slight affliction will come great blessings, for God has tried them and found them worthy to be with him. After testing them as gold in the furnace, he has accepted them as a holocaust. At time of his coming, they will shine like sparks that run in the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. Those who trust in him will penetrate the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love, for his grace and mercy are, chose, are for his chosen ones. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Um, so, in fact, none of us lives for himself, nor dies for himself. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. Either in life or in death, we belong to the Lord. It was for this purpose that Christ both, both died and came to life again, to be Lord, both of the living and of the dead. Then you, why do you criticize your brother or sister? And you, why do you despise them? For we will all appear at the tribunal of, law, of God. It is written, I swear by myself, word of the Lord, every knee will bend before me and every tongue shall give glory to God. So each of us will account for himself before God. Amen. Blessed assurance. What is the, what is the meaning of assurance? This is one of the very common hymns, blessed assurance. Blessedness means holiness, peace. What is this assurance? Um, a close, close in meaning to assurance is promise and confidence. The blessed confidence we have. Blessed assurance we have. Oh, what blessed hope we have. Oh, oh blessed uh, Guarantee we have. Yes, all of that is in the word assurance. And that's one of the hymns we're sing, singing. Blessed confidence. Jesus is there for us. All right. We will stand for this one. It's a common one. I want to tell all of you here, for those people who are listening on online, there must be one day if it only had two persons here. We want you to sing with the family. Share with it with them because this is a common hymn. Much better than the first one. Eh? We're singing much better. Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. 
praising my Savior all the day long. Right, there are one or two lines that are added to the hymn, and I want to read it for you and for those who are online. I won't take a chance to sing it. It's different words. Story, this is my story, praising my Savior, praising my Savior, praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior, praising my Savior, praising my Savior all the day long. This is a new addition to the old hymn, Blessed Assurance. And Ingrid refused to sing that one for us, and this is why I decided to read it. Thank you. Please be seated. God bless every one of you here and those who are at home. All right, we are going to have now, the word eulogy is not here, but it means the same thing, reflections and tribute. Come, Maureen. A tribute to my dearly departed brother, Neil Marlon Deltran, Arthur Rambo. Further on, you'll be able to know the reason of Rambo. I am Maureen Deltran Maharaj. I'm the eldest of the four siblings. Neil was the third child of our parents, Nelson and the late June Deltran. He was the father of us and Angeli Deltran, whose mom is Annie and stepfather of Barry, Chiney, Candy and Sandy, and the brother of myself, Ingrid and Larry. He was the uncle of Kriti, Shiva, Orion, Gerish, Nikhil, Satya, and Saisha. He was the brother-in-law of Nataki and the deceased of Rajkumar Maharaj. Neil was a self-proclaimed Rambo, very famous chap, naming himself. Neil's first passion was woodwork and he pursued this at school and later as a teacher at Goodwill Industries, where he taught this art to children with special needs and further pursuing private job. Neil's second passion was helping people and he was compassionate to the underprivileged, the elderly and the ill. Marvin Imamsha, Neil's first primary school friend, then came along Avinash Hiralal Aka Bryan was Neil's lifelong friend from four months until his passing. On the passing of one of, on, on his passing, one of our neighbors from our street, Auntie Doreen Cole, and was reminiscing how Neil took her two market bags from the Shagornas market and dropped off at her home. She was so grateful for the help, and that was Neil being Neil. My heart swallows pride for this brother of mine. Neil was also the authority on everything, so please do not try to get a discussion with him because it is always his way or the highway. At family gatherings, Neil was the life of the party because, of the, because of from the time you entered, he could either do two things, tick you off or have you rolling with laughter. He was a natural born comedian. Our family is known for having sweet hand, starting with my dad, myself, and the rest. But if you ask Neil, he thinks he was the best cook. So we shall give him the award for best cook. Neil, when he cooked, he ensures every family and friends alike under the sun can testify to having pictures of, on WhatsApp of his many dishes, which were prepared from as early as 4 a.m. He loved making many dishes. However, his specialty was baigan chuka, tomato sugar, fry alu, and fry beak. My cousin Baby shared that Neil, when he lived in Felicity, used to come home every morning at 4.45 a.m. and assist with the opening of her business. He did this religiously for years. She recalled if, he was run, if she was running late, he would bang on her doors and windows and say, Ma, I am home, by Ganchoka ready. He was known to provoke everyone at some point, starting with our dad, siblings, nephew, nieces. Boy, oh boy, I am sorry for them. No one got away. I will forever remember my brother, Neil. <laughs> His 
man said to me after my accident was Maury, Gil, you keep smiling, Gil, keep smiling, do not cry. <laughs> Neil Parson <laughs> has left a gaping hole in our hearts and pain and also our family. We take comfort that he's no longer in pain. We love you, Neil, and we miss you. Neil, you have now joined our mom, grandparents, auntie and uncle in another room where we hope one day to unite with all. Again, may you rest in peace and rise in glory. Our family would like to thank everyone for their prayer and support. Praise the Lord. Amen. I greet everyone with peace. My name is Chrissy Miami. Praise the Lord from the village Miami. Praise the Lord. That Neil grew up. Praise the Lord. Miami today. Amen. He was a known today. Miami today. A villager in the village. So I greet everyone again with peace. I know Miami is hard. It's difficult. So I offer condolences to all the family, all the loved ones, the children. First time I'm seeing his children. Praise the Lord. Miami today. Amen. So it's difficult. So I offer condolences. To the precious brother, praise the Lord. You know, Miami, praise the Lord. It's hard around this time. It's difficult when a loved one goes, praise the Lord. And I'm just going to rack it up quickly because only two minutes, praise the Lord. I, call it, I read from the Bible in the book, Miami, praise the Lord, of Kings. When King David lost his son, praise the Lord, Miami, today. And he cried and he wept and he moaned and he fasted while his son was alive. Miami, praise the Lord. And when his son died, he rose up and he ate. Miami, praise the Lord. He bathed, he changed his clothes and... They asked him why you did that. While he was alive, you fasted, you moaned, you weep. He said, while he died now, you do opposite. And he said, Miami praise God, he rejoiced for the fact that one day he will go back to his son. He says his son will not come to him, but one day he will go back to his son. So we have that victory, that rejoice, that one day, Miami, you all will go. You will meet Neil one day. He will not come back to you, praise the Lord, because the Bible says, they that have left you and gone, will not come back, praise the Lord, but we have that victory today, we hold on to that, that one day you will see, Neil again, praise the Lord, he was a good neighbor to me, Miami, praise the Lord, for the little time spent, Miami, he had a wonderful trade, wonderful talent, and his father knew Miami, praise the Lord, there's times when I needed certain things done, and I would come and ask him, praise the Lord, and he never refused, Miami, praise the Lord, he never turned me down, in this last rep, last two weeks, three weeks, Miami to the month, I tell you, I asked him for a lot of things to get done for the business and to God be the glory. He did give favor, praise God. He did help. He did assist as much as he could. So I appreciate that for the little time spent with him, praise the Lord. Amen. So to me, I would say he was a, a good neighbor, a wonderful neighbor for the little time that he came back. Praise the Lord, Miami, today. Amen. Right, and I am sure many neighbors and friends, this boy was only 50 years of age. All right. 50? Well, you're not far from 50. When you're 49, you're 50. All right. But that's quite young. And thank you, neighbor, and all the others, neighbors, classmates, the works. All right. Another hymn is all I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. It's on your program. This is fast becoming a very popular hymn. So you want to sing this hymn. You've selected this hymn to tell Neil, all I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. You want to tell him that? He could also say to all of you as he's he, is, he has left us, all I ask of you, he's saying this too. It's a two-way thing. When you sing it, he is echoing back. All I ask of you, Daddy, and all I ask of you, my brother and sisters and all the others, all I ask of you is always to remember me as loving you. All right, this is how you have to see the hymn. Let us all stand. 
All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Deep the joy of being together in one heart, and for me that's just where it is. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Someone will be calling you to be there for a while. Can you hear their cry from deep within? All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Laughter, joy, and presence, the only gifts you are. Have you time? I'd like to be with you. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Persons come into the fiber of our lives and their shadows fade and disappear. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Let us all unite in prayer. And I want you to say a prayer of thanksgiving for the life of Neil Marlon Dilchan. Thank God for this life that the Father shared, the Heavenly Father shared with us. Loving, compassionate, creator Father, the giver of life. Today we thank you that through Jesus we are saved, saved from the real sting of death. We praise you, Almighty God, that Jesus opened, opened for us the gates of life. Open the gates of life and open the gates of immortality. Almighty God, as the changes of life leave us unhappy and sad, and the rolling years steal those we love, we can only rest on your everlasting arms. And Father, we hold to the promise that you will be with us in this life, Almighty God. We pray that you will bless us. This morning, we sadly count those solemn moments with Neil Marlon. We honor Almighty God. We honor him in this very special way with his family. And for this short time, he journeyed this life with us. Almighty God, we remember your loving kindness to him and your abundant blessings to him. For all your goodness to him, Almighty God, and the joys of this earthly life. And for Jesus' presence in the challenges and trials of his life. And for leading him through life's journey, O oh Lord, we give you thanks. Almighty God, today we pray that you will bless and comfort his children, his siblings, especially his father and all his loved ones. That you will bless them and comfort them with your gracious presence. Father, be with us. Bless us. This day we are aware that this is not the only funeral. On this Sunday morning, Lord, there are funerals not only elsewhere in Trinidad, but all across the world. Someone is crying somewhere. Oh, great creator, stay with them. Comfort them and bless them all. For we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you and please be seated. There is a very beautiful reading from the Bible in one of the Psalms, Psalm 90. And I want to read a line from it for, for me and for all of you. It is a part of a prayer. It is a part of a prayer. You would have heard it before. Hear the part of the prayer is one line. And, and, and I hope if even you remember one word in it, that's plenty. Teach us how short our life is. I'll say it slowly. I want you to learn it. 
It's a very important prayer. It's not for this morning only, it's for all times. Teach us how short our life is so that we may live wisely. Teach us how short our life is so that we may become wise. This is in Psalm 90. Now, that same Psalm, that same Psalm tells us some things that we know. Because you're asking God to teach me how short my life is. And the same read, the same prayer says, human life is like a short hour in the night. You know, sometimes when you sleep, you, you kind of get up in the night and you think that you have slept for several hours, but it's only minutes. You just got up quickly. Human life is like a short hour in the night. We last no longer than a dream. You know, sometimes you, you, we have a dream and that dream will cover maybe several hours of an experience. We, we travel far away in some dreams that we have. I hear what the Bible is saying. We last no longer than a dream. That is really short. A dream is short, never so long. And then the same prayer said, we are like weeds that sprout in the morning. Like grass that sprout in the morning. Grow and burst into bloom. That is this life you and I are living now. We are like the plants that are growing and bursting into blooms and fruiting and so on. We are like weeds that sprout in the morning, that grow and burst in the bloom, but then evening comes, says the Bible. We dry up and die in the evening. That's human life, eh? One little metaphor and illustration about the plant that looks good in the morning. It looks better by midday, and by evening time it dries. Human life is like that. Teach me how short my life is. That is what the prayer is all about. Life fades away like a whisper. A whisper is not long, eh? A whisper is much long, uh, much shorter than this little sermon this morning. Life fades away like a whisper. It is short. And here this one. 70 years is all we have. I'm sure you heard this before. 70 years is all we have. 80 years if we are strong. Life is soon over and we're gone. Now, um, I better say something about People who die younger, 49, going on to 50, Marlon. 70 years is all we have, but he wasn't 70. And there are people, persons who have died. Persons who have died before 70. Two weeks ago, we had one of a young man who died at 40. But the Bible is saying in the same prayer, Psalm 90, 70 years is all we have, 80 years if we are strong, but life ends. What does it mean? It means the lesson we are learning today. Yes, teach me. Be my teacher. And help me to understand that life has a cutoff point in it. It could be 49 like Marlon. It could be 40 like another person. It could be shorter like than that for someone who died in an accident or through some serious illness. Teach me how short my life is. I don't know who is who again going to be your teacher and my teacher. What other teachers we need to remind us that we are not in this world forever and for all times? What other teacher you need? All right. I want to remind you of this. The best, not the best, the most compelling. It is frightening. But the most compelling and forceful teacher this morning for you and for me is a casket. The casket is a silent teacher for you and for me that life is short. It is as short as a whisper. It is short as a dream. It is short as the life of a plant. It fades away so quickly. And the casket is an important teacher for you. And the hearse that passes. And last night for those who heard Somebody on a PA system saying, we are sorry to announce the passing and the death of so-and-so. All those are reminders. And the prayer is saying, teach me how short my life is. And what about COVID in 20, 2020 and in 2021? And we have come into 2022. The SARS-CoV virus 
has been teaching us that there is something called the king of terrors and that is death. In Trinidad and Tobago over these past few years and we are coming into the third year. More than 96,000 cases of COVID in this country. Plenty, plenty and there are some not recorded. And some not reported. Oh yes, we know of cases like that. And over 3,000 deaths because of COVID and some not reported. Oh yes, there are about in the whole world because of COVID in these two years. More than five and a half million people have died because of COVID. Let me tell you something. Is that another teacher? Teach me how short my life, human life is. The casket teaches us. Life experiences teaches us about the world of plants and so on, how they, they grow, they burst into bloom, they die and so on. COVID has stepped in to remind us that human life is brief. And we are here only for a little while. But what about other diseases besides COVID, SARS-CoV-2? What about all the other regular diseases that take human life? Aging, man's violence. Today I was reading in the newspaper, I didn't read all of it, about the violence in Trinidad and Tobago. And how many people have died? It's not only COVID. Natural diseases, our hate for one another, the use of the gun in this country, you know how many people have died. Sometimes five of them get killed one evening. And you're talking about COVID. And all of these are teachers to remind us that human life is as short as a whisper. Human life is as short as a dream. Human life is brief. Now we have to be prepared for dying. You can't run from it. You can't bribe the angel of death when it come, when he comes. No, 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 no. We have to tell ourselves that this is a part of living that is dying. Dying is a part of being in this world and we have to get ready for it. One of the things that we have to remember is that we have to give an account of the time we have. How did you spend your time? We'll have to uh, tell the creator how he is going to ask you, you know, I give you life, 49 years as in the case of Neil, 70 years, 80 years if we are strong, the same prayer I read. All right, maybe more, yes, people go on to 100. But we need to live in such a way so that when the last day comes and we have to stand in the presence of the Creator, that we will not be embarrassed and ashamed of the life we have lived. One of the great authors of past years named Mark Twain, I like this. He said we must live in such a way. Everybody. We must live in such a way that when we die, even the grave digger will cry. Not only friends. The grave digger might be a stranger. The undertaker is a stranger. And Mark Twain says, you and I must live in such a way. So that when we pass on from this world, even the undertaker will cry for us. But that's how we have to live, live good. We have to get ready. There's a fellow named Rabindranath Tagore. He lived long, not too long ago, but he died. He lived in the Far East. He was Hindu and so on, Eastern religions. And he was right. He wrote a series of poems in a collection called Gitanjali. And he's talking about death. And Rabindranath Tagore, he said in Gitanjali, hear it? He said, death is at my door. He has crossed the unknown and brought the summons. You know what a summons? Like when a policeman brings a summons for you. Death is at my door. He has crossed the unknown and brought the summons to my home. And Tagore says, the night is dark and I am afraid. Yet I will take up my lamp. He couldn't bargain with the angel of death. He said, I will take up my lamp. He will go back because he, his mission is over leaving a dark shadow in my morning. He says, I am afraid. But who is? Do we, know, do we know what this journey is all about? No. Hindu, Muslim, Christian, whoever you are, even you don't believe in God, whoever you are, this is real. This is a part of life. Listen, this is a fearful experience. Eh? And Tagore says, I have my lamp and I will walk. But I am afraid. And in, there's a little psalm we say, it's in the Old Testament. 
Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Yes, we are afraid. I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death and there, is, there are a lot of things there that will make me afraid. The unknown of the valley of the shadow of death is enough to scare anybody. So, let me tell you this. I believe this. You cannot afford, we're not talking about religion. We're talking about life and the casket. We're talking about living and dying. You, I personally believe you cannot die alone, you know. You cannot die alone. I believe that we need somebody. Somebody who knows that way through the valley of the shadow of death to be with us. I would like when, when my time comes, that if I, when I have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I wouldn't want to be like Tagore to take up my lamp alone. I want somebody to be there who knows the way. I want somebody to be there with me. And you need somebody to be with you. You can't manage this thing by yourself. You can't manage the valley of the shadow of death by yourself. Nobody. And this is why I remember the time when I was in the church for two years helping and Mr. Dilchan was there. And I said, God bless you, sir. This fellow was my friend. Dilchan is always in church. I'm sure he prayed for all his children. Oh, yeah. He prayed for all of them. He prayed for all of you as fathers and mothers. We, we do that. That we are praying that our sons and daughters are in our own personal life too. That we will find somebody who, who knows the way through the valley of the shadow of the casket. And in our faith, he has heard us say ever so often in that little St. Charles Presbyterian Church that Jesus passed that way so he knows the way. And this is why you need somebody. And if you have nobody to walk with, through, to, with you through the valley of the shadow of death, today this service is about this Jesus. He says, I am going to prepare a place for you. You need not be afraid. I will be with you through the valley of the shadow of death. In my father's house, there are many mansions. Why do you have to tell yourself you could manage this thing alone? I like Tago. Tago was ready. And when the angel of death says, it's time for you to, to go. He says, the night is dark and I am fearful, but I have a lamp. I am going to take up my lamp. He didn't say, give me time. I'm going, to, I'm going to get my lamp, you know. He was ready and prepared, prepared all the time. And you and I have to be prepared every day. You don't know when that's going to come? Nobody knows. And this is the hope we have. Who shall separate us from the love of God in Romans? Nothing in all of creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. And that's the faith of Mr. Dilchan. That's the faith of his children. That is our faith. When I say you need somebody to walk with you and we need somebody to walk with us to the valley of the shadow of death, the Christian religion helps you to find that somebody in Jesus. He says, I am going to prepare a place for you and I'm going to come. And I'm going to walk with you to the place of eternal and everlasting life. Today I pray that God will bless you all. I'm sorry I have to take all these minutes to tell you this, but I feel I started off by telling you I have been at so many funerals. Wednesday I have to be at one in guides in Cuba. Today I am here. Last Sunday I am at one. And all these people have been so dear and precious to me. And I, I just want to share this with you. That it is not necessary for you to die alone. That Jesus is there. He, he provides us the, the assurance. Oh, blessed assurance we sang just now. What comfort there is that he is there with us. To lead us in times like these. So God bless you all and be with you. The closing hymn and then we'll have a prayer. We will have the committal too here. Because there could be all kinds of problems at the cemetery. Maybe the grave diggers are there. Into your hands we commend our spirit, O Lord, and then we'll have the prayer. Let us all stand. I pray that God will bless you all, the family and friends of Neil, 
God will be with you. He has two children. Will you raise your hands? Let me see you. One, two. God bless you. More. Yes. God bless you. All right. Into your hands we commend our spirit. Yeah. Why? We commend our spirit almighty Jesus in your hands. Well, who else? We have nobody. Whom have I on, in, on earth beside you and whom in heaven beside you? It's only this Jesus that gives meaning to a morning like this. All right. I don't know this song. Maureen, you know it? No. You come and stand by me. You know how long I want you to come and help me sing the same? Come here, Maureen. Um, in grade. Come here. I don't know the song and it's on your program. Into your hands. Come right here. I can't sing. I will say it. I cannot sing. Talk it then. Good evening. Good, after good morning, everyone. Thank you all on behalf of my family for being here with us to celebrate the life of my brother, Neil, mm -hmm. who we love and we will dearly miss. And I am really not going to embarrass myself and sing, so I will say it, and everybody who knows it will sing it in their head. <laughs> Into your hands we commend our spirit, O Lord. Into your hands we commend our hearts. For we must die to ourselves in loving you. Into your hands we commend our love. I will proclaim your name to all my friends, God of our fathers and our God too. Your name shall sound from every voice, O Lord. Soon every heart will worship you. Amen. Amen. Now I want you all, the priest normally does this, the priest normally does this and he says this at the graveside. Sometimes, not all priests do this, take up a little bit of dirt and say, earth to earth and ashes to ashes. I want you all to say it, to say it with me. The grave diggers are waiting down, is it Chiguanas Public Cemetery? Is that a family plot or something so? Yeah. Alright, what, his mother is there too? Yeah. All right, so you say it after me. For as much as it had pleased Almighty God to call to himself our beloved brother Neil Marlon Dilchan, we therefore commit his body to the earth. Earth to earth. Ashes to ashes, ashes, to ashes, and dust to dust, in sure uncertain hope of the resurrection, to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who shall change the body of our, our low estate, who shall change the body with its low estate, that it may be like unto his glorious body. We hold fast to this faith in the name of God our Creator and through Jesus Christ our Lord and the Holy Spirit the Eternal Comforter. And we are singing the Amen. 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 Thank you all and please be seated. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for those who are here with us. Thank you. God bless you. And those who are on the live stream program anywhere else, God bless you. Remember, we are not going to die alone because we cannot handle it. We need somebody who went there before. And the Church of Jesus Christ reminds us he's there. Thank you. Many blessings to you all. All right, Nelson, my brother. Papi, bless you. Good morning again. 
Thank you, Reverend Tilak Singh, for always being here with our family to support us during this time. Thank you to everyone who is here present right now and who is live on YouTube. A special welcome to Brian. We know, we know how much. I, I think I can't say that Neil was a friend, Neil was a brother to you. And um, we are very happy to see you and your friend at the back here, everyone. So on behalf of my family, we would like to thank everyone today. The support from the day Neil and my other um, sibling and dad were ill to, to now and even going forward has been tremendous, has been overwhelming, and we are very grateful. And we thank you, Lord, for giving us the strength today to be together in unity. As we say, farewell until we meet again. God bless you all. Thank you.